All right, let's close this with Dr. Cody, one of the brain childs of this, uh, or the, the, the master, the brain master of Functional Aging Institute. It's only going to get better um, every year to see, uh, you know, the the community that's built, the, the change, the research, we know there's opportunity and need. So Dr. Cody, please come on up, share your brilliance with us. All right, well, we are gonna bring this around full circle. So Colin Milner kind of gave a big picture overview, looking at some trends and things that are happening within the active aging industry. and. I had already decided that this was kind of a topic I was going to talk about uh, early on before he sent me his title. And he sent me his title, and I was like, oh, crap. We're talking about the same thing. And then I thought about it, and I know Colin well enough, and what he does, like, we are not going to be talking about the same thing. Um, and so I think it was great to have him start and give us some ideas about the opportunity and break down the opportunity a little bit more. And I'm going to dial in some things that from my perspective, I see happening within the industry over the next five to 10 years that I think you need to be aware of that could potentially impact your business, All right? So I want you to be aware of those things. But first, you know, I, I try to sometimes do a little something on stage to, to at least get a little attention, get a little buzz, do something outside the norm, maybe get a little smile. Um, sometimes it's a goat that we bring out or a little stupid pose, but you know, my kids have had a big impact on, on me and kind of what I do and what I'm all about and what kind of the, the Dr. Cody that you might see on stage is definitely not Dad Cody, right, that you see at home, very different. And so I, I'm gonna do a little, little something for my kids, right? This is for my kids, so somebody get out your phone and videotape this. You're gonna have to put it on Facebook. You've got to put it on Facebook, right? You can, hey, yeah, put it up, hashtag it. All right, you ready? No. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Come on, baby. Yeah. Woo -hoo! Nissan knows. All right, that's all you get. That's it. All right. Back to reality. Okay. Jack is going back on. <laughs> uh, that's right. What? No, I feel good. I'm all right. All right, so a few months ago, kind of what, what really stimulated my thinking on this topic is, for again, Dan and I do a lot of speaking within the industry. We talk to a lot of people. There's still you know, some things in the industry, a whole lot of things in the industry that just don't match up with what you all know in this room right now, okay? And so a few months ago, a report came out by Club Industry uh, that they published, and this is it. This was kind of their looking at the next five years for the fitness industry, and what are things that are happening that are gonna shape fitness and wellness? So, of course, I grabbed this report immediately. I devoured it. I think it's an 80 to 100 page report, much less when you take out the advertisements within it. But I read every article, and it was talking about technology, and it was talking about locker rooms, and design, and all sorts of things that, of course, are important. But, of course, what was I looking for? What are they talking about boomers? How much are they talking about seniors? And so I actually did a search function to look for the terms boomer, boomer, seniors, older adult, mature. And I found five references in the whole document. So I went back and looked at those references. There was only one statement that was even substantial as far as what it said about boomers and seniors. Some of it was talking about locker room design and it would throw seniors in there, right? Or technology, and it would just throw the word seniors in there. And Fred Hoffman, who does a lot of Group X programming, he was the only one that made any substantial comment about this population. He said, look, our programming is having to change because of this aging demographic, this growth in the aging population. But then that was it, right? That was all. So all of their trends and predictions, 
They certainly talked about a lot of things. They didn't talk to, about the one thing that I think is the most important, the elephant in the room. And so that's really when I, it really affirmed to me, we need to talk about this here and now. And we need to talk about what are the things that are happening that I think are really going to impact your business that I want you to know about. Okay? So we're going to go through my top five things. Start with number five. You've heard several of these already throughout the conference. So I'm going to kind of bring it all back together. Okay? So let's start with number five. Ready? Ryan just talked about it. Brain fitness. Brain fitness is truly coming of age. We've talked about it a lot, time, a lot, a lot. It's gotten a lot of media hype. But let me tell you, brain fitness is the next step that's probably going to impact your business and how you work with boomers and seniors. Okay, and let's look at just some of the facts behind it. Yes, cognitive health is the number two biggest concern that older adults report. And I'm so glad that they mentioned that. Okay, it is a top concern. People are very much concerned with their mental health because they see the older generation that they're taking care of that, are, that is developing Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Let me get a show of hands. Who knows someone who has developed Alzheimer's, right? Most of us, it affects a lot of us. And so there's a lot of concern about what's gonna to happen to us as we age, right? The boomers are very much in tune with this question. It's one of those questions that's rolling around in their brain that even if they don't verbalize, it's up there, right? They're thinking about it. They, they might share it in private conversations might not publicize it, but I'm telling you, it is there. And when you have conversations with boomers that are real and meaningful, they'll then talk about it, okay? So they're very concerned. You know what? They've got a right to be because the prevalence of dementia and Alzheimer's is increasing. And it's expected to continue to increase in relation to the older adult growth around the world. And again, this is not just a U.S. thing. Globally, we are struggling with how to stem the tide of Alzheimer's disease. And unlike a lot of other conditions and problems, the major concern is we're not even close. Scientifically and medically, clinically, we're not even close to really figuring Alzheimer's out. We know a lot more than we used to, but when they say, hey, is there gonna be some sort of medication that will prevent Alzheimer's? They're like, we, we don't even see anything on the horizon right now, okay? So this is a major concern for a lot of people. When we look globally, we see that the United States ranks right up there at the top. I mentioned that I did a, a conference in Norway last year, and I did a session on cognition. And Norway, I think, ranks number 11 in the world. So they just, they're just out of the top 10. But what's interesting, if you look at Finland, Iceland, Sweden, and Norway, if you look at that whole area of the world, what is going on? And you know what? They're more active than we are. They tend to eat better than we do. So what's happening? There, there, there are factors that we just don't even know yet that we're trying to figure out. So this is definitely a major concern, and it's a growing concern within the U.S., and it's a growing concern for your clients. Here's where I see a shift occurring. When you talk to people, on one side, there's this concern about prevention, right? I'm, I, I don't want this disease process to occur. I want to avoid not knowing my family members and having to be taken care of and being a burden. But on the other side, the conversation also then turns to, but you know what? I don't want to be just typical either. I want to optimize my cognitive ability, right? I want to be sharp. I don't just want to be normal. Okay? I want to be that sharp person. I want to be like Jepson who, even though he's totally goofy and outlandish, he's a sharp guy, right? He's still mentally very sharp. So there's this conversation in which we can steer people away from preventing the negative to really highlighting the positive aspect of optimization for your cognitive and your mental abilities. 
And I see a lot of people being very inspired by that. And I think that's where the next level comes from. Not thinking from the clinical, I'm going to help you prevent Alzheimer's, but from the fitness, I'm going to help you mag magnify your cognitive ability now and in the future, which will then help you to delay, prevent Alzheimer's, we hope, right? So we're steering the conversation in a different direction. Now, because of this, as Ryan mentioned, this whole brain training market is just blowing up globally, billions and billions of dollars. And it's going to keep growing because even though they've been sued and they can't make certain claims, the general public doesn't know that, right? The general public thinks if I want to train my brain, then I need to do something mental like sit down and read or, or do a crossword puzzle or Sudoku or play this game. Right? That's, that's how they think. So it's up to us to introduce this idea of how physical activity, and especially cognitively enhanced physical activity, can help. In fact, this was one of the, uh, the things that Ryan referred to, is that they brought together a group of ex experts, Stanford University brought together a group of neuroscientists, they partnered with the Max Planck Institute from Germany, and they said, look, we're gonna bring all these experts together and we're gonna take a look at all the evidence related to computerized brain training. And this was their their final statement on the matter. It's pretty much exaggerated. It's pretty much exaggerated, okay? Is there a role for it? Yes, there is. But there's a much bigger role for you as a trainer regarding physical activity and fitness because we know exercise makes a difference. We know it's important. Both aerobic and resistance training are important. And in fact, they're probably synergistic in that they add to each other. The benefits add because they actually help the brain by two different pathways and mechanisms. So you can get more out of your training by not just doing aerobic or resistance, by combining them, by doing both. And think about how many older adults don't do any resistance training, right? They don't do any strength training. They think, I'm walking, I'm fine. Okay? You're only getting part of the, of the solution physically and only part of the solution mentally or cognitively. Okay? What works? These are the things that in the literature work. Tai Chi, it works. Okay? It helps to improve cognition. Active participation in sports improves cognition. Right? Think about what you have to do in a sporting activity. Right? If you're playing soccer, what is happening? You're not only considering your position on the field, but the other player's position, where the ball is at the time, what's gonna happen when the ball comes, how to react once you get the ball, what do you do with it, where are you going with it, right? You are taking in all this environmental stimuli and processing it into physical movement, right? It's, that's actually very cognitively complex, very difficult. And that, we talked about kind of the visual aspect. I just went to the American College of Sports Medicine annual meeting, and one of the sessions I went to they were talking about uh, some, some kind of innovative techniques that this one physical therapist is using for post-concussion rehabilitation. And if you're into sports, you know that people, uh, athletes that get a concussion, they're returned to play according to current standards when they're not ready to return to play. Concussions have a very long lasting effect on the brain. And a lot of those effects mimic what we see in dementia and cognitive decline and other issues. And they showed this really cool video of an untrained person trying to defend uh, somebody who was playing soccer. And they tracked their eye movement. And their eye movement was all over the place. Where do I look, right? I'm trying, do I track the ball? Do I track the person's head? Where do I, like, it's just crazy all over the place. And then they showed a skilled soccer player and they tracked their eye movements. And it was ball, 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 knee, hip, knee, hip, ball, 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 hip, right? It, he knew exactly where to look to process the appropriate environmental stimulation or, or information, okay? It works. It's very stimulating to the brain. Dance also works. Let me ask you, what kind of dance works best? The one you just did, that's really close. <laughs> that was a good one. Now, this, right... That stimulated my brain really well until what? Till I learned it. Exactly. Right? It's the new dance moves, not the ones that, that I can do without thinking about it. 
It's you learn a new dance, guess what? That's great, learn another one. Learn another one, it's that novel activity. And then coordination and motor fitness. And we don't quite know what's next until Ryan tells us, okay? Right? This is literally the reason that we've partnered with Ryan to develop this new course. I think it's, I, 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 I am so excited about this course, I cannot even tell you, right? Because I think this is a missing link that everybody's looking for and searching for. And, but how do I do it, right? How do I understand the neuroscience without being a neuroscientist? How does somebody translate this information for me to tell me the practical what to do with this client versus this client versus this client instead of just throwing general stuff out there, right? I think it's, it's the next layer. But it really is also the reason why we love Tai Chi, right? That's why we support it so much because the research on the benefits of Tai Chi are go way outside of cognition, right? It's balance and function, everything else, it works. It's also why we love the Ageless Grace program. We talk about Ageless Grace. It works. And if you want a program that people of all different functional abilities can do, and you can go learn this program and implement it right away, Ageless Grace. Okay? It works. I actually did a research project, on age, a short research project on Ageless, Ageless Grace last year that everybody's pressuring me to get published. Right? Got to get it published. Okay? It was just a short intervention, and it worked. And I was surprised how well it worked for physical and cognitive function, okay? These things are effective. I think it's the next level for us, okay? It's the next thing that we need to figure out, understand, and get to people to make an impact on their lives. Plus, it's gonna set you up as a unique expert in your community, correct? You learn this stuff and you can communicate it to potential clients, they're gonna be like, why would I go anywhere else? Why would I do silver sneakers for free or go to the Y for free? I can't get that here, okay? I, can, I have to come to you. So a lot of benefit from the, for this. So what does this mean for you now? I'm gonna have this at the end of each one. One, I think you do need to start educating yourself on brain fitness and what this is all about. You need to get ahead of the curve. Things are moving quickly. So if you don't know anything about cognitive fitness, it's okay, but change it. Start educating yourself. In fact, I didn't realize this, uh, Ryan told me that uh, the latest special edition of Time Magazine is on Alzheimer's. Uh, so I'm going to run out and pick up that copy. I didn't know it, it existed. That's a way to educate yourself. Okay? Think about taking a course, doing Tai Chi, doing Ageless Grace. These are all easy resources for you to, to get to. I want you to start talking about brain fitness with your clients. I want you to ask them. Ask them, you know, what are you doing to improve your cognition? How concerned with you are you about your mental health? Do you know people with Alzheimer's? Do you have people in your, in your family with Alzheimer's? How is this affecting you and how you think about your own cognitive health as you move forward? I guarantee you those conversations are gonna be very enlightening to you. And you'll realize how meaningful having these, these programs are to them and start talking about brain fitness to them, okay? And then, Start to do something with it. Really try to incorporate it into your programming as much as you are currently able. If the only thing you know right now is some of the stuff that Ryan showed on stage, start implementing those things. If all you know right now is Tai Chi, just start doing it. In fact, one of the things that I love about Tai Chi and even Ageless Grace is I like to take the parts of those things and just use them with my clients. I can do Tai Chi as a class, or I can take my small group and say, hey, let's learn this new movement. Oh, did you know this is Tai Chi? And guess what? They're trying to figure out this movement and control their body, and what am I doing? Right? Supercharging the brain. Okay? You can take those pieces and use them as you want. It's okay. You have permission. Okay? Number four. So here's number four. Look out. There are seniors that are getting fit. We don't talk about this group very much, but guess what? That's about to change. Because we are gonna start talking about how to deal with fit seniors versus the lower functioning seniors that we, we, we focus on a lot, okay? So let's talk about this group a little bit because again, my interest in this group has really started to get ramped up and I'm excited to share with you a couple things right now, but 
If you remember Mark Middleton, he's presented at our conference several times before. He is, he is the, the founder and president of Growing Boulder. It's a multimedia company who is really focused on changing the conversation about aging. Um, and they do some exciting stuff. They have some great memes that they put out. We've actually partnered with them. They're our marketing partner for Ageless Fitness and, and Fit Body Forever. They create marketing materials for us that are just amazing because they, Mark is a master's athlete. And so they interview tons of master's athletes and tons of experts in the area, and they're very inspirational. If you are not connected with them on Facebook, you need to be. They have awesome stuff. You'll love it, your clients will love it, okay? So this, he's really kind of sparked my interest in this for the, over the past several years. And then recently, at an ACSM meeting, uh, the same ACSM meeting I was just talking about, Pamela Peake spoke. She is a physician, uh, very big into to women's health and other areas of health. And she's in, been involved with an organization for a number of years that just got me completely jazzed up. Let's watch this video. I cannot tell you how honored I am to be here at the National Senior Games. Honestly, you all have inspired me beyond belief. The talent and capability is everywhere. It only needs an opportunity. And that's why the National Senior Games are so important to make those opportunities happen. have talked about the fact that masters athletes are kind of the epitome of healthy aging, right? They're the ones that have been out there, they've been active, they've been eating well, and now they function at a really high level and have lots of longevity. They have functional longevity, something you hear me talk about all the time. They are achieving it. Yesterday, we were uh, in, a, uh, the, two days ago, we were in our mastermind meeting and I was getting some ideas from them, talk about next year's summit and some ideas. And, and I said, what do you think about um, having our summit next year in Albuquerque, New Mexico? And they're like, what? Why would we do that? This is why. <laughs> we are really thinking about the possibility of co-locating during the senior games for a couple of different reasons that, that, that I'll kind of share with you. But for one, because then... We could participate, we could watch it, we could invite the athletes in, right? I think we could have a really good time, okay? Really exciting. But the senior games is something that I blew off a long time ago because I participated in some local senior games. They were nothing like the national senior games, right? Uh, we're not talking about checkers and uh, seated balloon volleyball, right? Th these are people that are competing athletically at a high level. In fact, these are the events uh, that they have in the National Senior Games. Uh, pickleball. We keep talking, pickleball is just taking over the world. What is going on, right? But I love seeing things like, did you see that? I don't know how that woman was that was pole vaulting, but really, seriously? I mean, that's awesome. That's a high level of function. What can we learn from these fit senior athletes. And the reason why I put it on a, a trend prediction for the next five to 10 years is because they're growing. Master sports is growing rapidly. There will be over 10,000 people that will participate in the senior games 
every two years. And there are tons more that participate every year in their state games that are trying to qualify for the national senior games. Now, not everybody that could participate in the senior games does, right? Some people just, they compete on their own. But I think there's some really interesting statistics that are are meaningful and very powerful here. So Becca George Ray is a researcher at the University of South Dakota, and she has been testing these athletes since 2011, and she has developed uh, a senior athlete fitness exam in order to test uh, these individuals because they are at a high level of function. What she's found is like some of the normal tests that we talk about don't work. I'm excited because I'm gonna now start doing some research with Dr. George Ray. And hopefully we can get um, Christian Thompson involved in what as well. So I've already talked to him a little bit about it. He's pretty excited about it. We'd really like to create a team to keep testing these athletes, but also introducing some additional components to the test to keep learning because what happens is she just fell into it. She's a physical therapist. Uh, she teaches in a physical therapy program. She called up the, the state games one year just to bring some students in for an experience. She said, hey, we would like to bring some students in just to test some of your athletes, but we don't want to do anything that you aren't already doing. So just tell us what you're doing and we'll kind of follow suit. And they said, testing, we don't do any testing. She said, you don't, you don't test your athletes? No, they just come and, and compete. So she went, tested them, and there it started, right? She just fell into it. And now she's tested over 2,000 athletes. And we're learning so much about not only these athletes, but how that applies to how do we improve function. And also from a business standpoint, how do we capitalize on that? So here are some things that I'm just going to point out, some brief things. Obviously, they're training a lot. Primarily, they're doing cardiovascular training. Most of them do not participate in a lot of strength training. There's an opportunity right there, okay? But they are very active, obviously. So they're exercising five, six, seven days per week regularly. So these are not people that we need to reach with a marketing message of, oh, you're inactive, right? This is a different message that's really going to, uh, re- that they're going to respond to. A quarter of these athletes didn't start competing until after the age of 50. And I think, based on some other data I've seen, that's the number that's going up. These 60 and 70-year-olds are now going, hey, I can do that. And they're just starting to compete. They're getting turned on. There's a great story of this woman who she had, like, competed in some stuff early on and then got out of it. And now she was 90. And she, I think it was her son or son-in-law or somebody, she said, hey, come test me in the 100-yard dash. And she went out on her street and they tested her in the 100 yard dash. And based on that number, they were like, oh, you would have broken the world record for 90 year olds. (laughs) And so you know what? She went and did, (laughs) right? And now her goal, what do you think her goal is now? To break the record at 100, that's exactly right, right? She's turned on, she's not some super fit person necessarily from all perspectives, but sport has really turned her on. And we're finding more and more people that com- competition is a great outlet for them during this phase of their life. Competition is fun, isn't it? And we try to use that in a, in a fun way, but who doesn't love going and competing and actually getting a medal and winning and getting an award? Okay, it's a lot of fun, and there's a lot of camaraderie between the, the athletes as well. One of the benefits for training and focusing on this as a market is that they're healthy. You don't have to worry as much about cardiovascular disease. Their, their rates of cardiovascular disease are really low. They can still get it. Their rates of diabetes, really low. Okay, so these are generally very healthy individuals. Now, of course, they do have some orthopedic issues and limitations you gotta deal with, but they're very healthy. But this is also what's interesting. How they train determines their type of fitness. Now, it's no surprise, is it? Okay. Look at this, archers and swimmers. So they test single leg balance. They test single leg balance, eyes open. Then they put them on a foam pad, test them with eyes open. And they put them, I think, back on the floor with a single leg stance, eyes closed. And they tested them. And what they found is, look at swimmers. Swimmers suck. Man, your balance sucks. (laughs) Duh, right? They're doing all their training in the water. But... Why are archers, why do they have such good balance? 
What's interesting about the archery competition is you don't just stand there and shoot and go, oh, that was great. They shoot and then they got to run to their next station and shoot again. And then they got to run to the next station and shoot again. And they repeat that. So their balance is actually really good. Okay. Because that's how they're training. Okay. Swimmers, not so much, but where do swimmers really excel? Got a lot of shoulder flexibility. Okay. So their type of training is determining the type of fit that they are. In fact, this, when we look at our hierarchy of functional aging that I showed you, I said we, we have this semi-fit and this fully fit because some people are just that. Man, their cardiovascular fitness is great and their balance is horrible. Or you're really strong, but your cardiovascular fitness sucks, right? They're not fully fit in all areas, so there's opportunities for training here. Same thing here. They are, they are above the norms, far above the norms on all these tests, but there are areas that they need to improve. So when we think about fall rates as an example, the normal, typical individual, you're talking about 25 to 30% are going to fall. In the senior athletes, about 10% fall. They still fall, right? There are still issues. They're not immune, but obviously the rates are much lower than others. Okay? So this is something that um, I, that, that Becca George Ray just kind of came to the conclusion herself down here at the bottom, what do they need to do? They need to cross train. Yes, doing their sport is good, but they need other stuff. We're the solution for all the other stuff, right? There's a huge opportunity here to reach out to this population and really help them improve their fitness from a holistic perspective. And, and they will understand that, Okay. Here's another opportunity. Anybody familiar with Aging Evolution? Okay, go to their website, go to their Facebook page. This is another perspective on the fit senior that is gaining traction. Okay. The good looking, well-shaped, muscular fit senior. Both these ladies are in their 60s. You would never know it from looking at them, right? In fact, the, the lady on the right is one of the founders of Aging Evolution. Now, I don't want to leave anybody out, so, all right, let's show these guys. <laughs> they were in their 50s. Let's go back to this one. I like this one better. So here's a new trend that's occurring. Now, I'm not, if you've heard me ever talk before, like I'm not into bodybuilding. Uh, you know, I, that's kind of what, its, own, its own thing. But what's happening is this whole physical transformation that can occur when you really dive in to a good training and nutrition program, people are latching onto. And they're latching onto it in their 50s and 60s. And so I'm all for it. If you're gonna do that and it, you're really gonna follow the right type of model, Go for it. But this is really gaining some traction. Uh, and they put out a lot of great memes and, and, and some really good info that I think is, is, is beneficial. But they, what are they doing? They're changing the language about what it means to be older, correct? And they have 60, 70, 80, 90-year-olds that, that they show that have made huge transformations. I love it. Great inspirational stuff. So what does this mean? Well, one, I think you've got to think about, is this even a market I want to pursue? Do I, you know, does it fit in my wheelhouse to want to pursue senior athletes? Who in here has an athletic background and you love to work with senior athletes? That'd be something you'd be interested in. See? Good. That's awesome. You need, you need to put this on your radar. Just kind of put this, make a mark from this summit to start doing some research about maybe what local resources exist or state resources exist that you might start tapping into and start developing a strategy then for, okay, what, what would this mean? What would I do from a training perspective or a business perspective? And does it make sense, right, for me? And then I think you need to really create a solid business plan because the, the language, the imaging, right, the, everything that you do is going to have to be tweaked a little bit. The senior population, we don't talk about senior marketing, do we? No. We talk about within this broad, older population, find your avatar and speak to that person. So you need to figure out who these people are and how do I speak to them. 
And I love it that um, I'll, I'll be getting engaged in this research and hopefully be sharing you know, insights with you as we go along. Um, def definitely gonna have Dr. George Ray on a webinar here shortly and <laughs> talking a little bit more about this market, okay? All right, number three, we're getting there. These boomers are gonna start getting old. If in the next five to 10 years, the boomers are gonna start hitting their 80s. I think that's significant for all of us in a number of different ways, okay? So let's think about this. What do we know about most 80 plus year olds? For one, they don't look like Ernestine Shepherd, right? The world's oldest bodybuilder, okay? Have you seen her stuff? Yeah, yeah great stuff, very inspirational, love her, okay? She wears some crazy outfits too. What do we know about most 80 year olds? Well, this is what we know. Stuff breaks down at 80. When you look at the research, there, there are a few weirdly magical numbers. 70, 75, and 80 are weirdly magical numbers, and I kid you not. We see things all of a sudden go up sharply or down sharply after the age of 70 and every five years till 80. So what's gonna happen, what does that mean for 80-year-olds? Well, we think about frailty, we think about fall risk, we think about functional issues, right? We think about all these negative things that can occur in really old age because from a gerontological standpoint, that's now what they're doing. Now they're becoming the oldest old category. So there's gonna, that's gonna make a difference when we're doing our marketing and we're doing our training, we're doing our programming. There's a lot of great potential, I still think, because we see this, we have this. You probably, how many of you have had 80 plus year olds join your program that have really never worked out before? Yeah, look at that, right? And so what's gonna happen? It's gonna keep happening. 80 plus year olds are gonna still keep joining your gym. Now there's gonna be a lot more of them. The two fastest growing segments are 85 plus year olds and 100 plus year olds. So that's gonna have an impact on our business and we need to think about what that means, okay? Now, we also wanna make sure that we understand they can still be fit and healthy, like Ernestine Shepherd, okay? We always wanna hold out that as an opportunity. I think Colin's first point yesterday was to me the most foundational, meaningful thing that you can talk about. Who remembers what his first point was? Okay, how do you know when you're old? He asked that question. You can cheat, you can look at your notes. Nope. Close. It's the perspective of how you view older adults. And the key word that you just said, say it out loud, potential, right? What is your potential as an 80-year-old? Not what are your problems as an 80-year-old? I hope you fully understand that difference in your language, in your messaging, in your communication, in your marketing, that you say, hey, yeah, you're 82, so what? There's still so much potential for you that you can change these things in your life. You can improve it. You can impact your functional ability. You can impact, impact your health. You can impact your life. But let's go to falls for a second because they are a major concern. And I think we're gonna see a more and more of a focus on fall prevention as well. Here's a resource that, um, I, that I want you to be aware of that I've talked about a little bit before. I've definitely, we've talked about this in our mastermind group as a resource. So falls are a great concern. Uh, this is from uh, the CDC website. They have created a program called STEADY. Okay. What you can see down at the bottom, stopping elderly accidents, deaths, and injuries from falls is what they're focused on. This is a program that's being targeted to physicians. Okay. They want doctors to start screening all of their older clients for falls and for balance problems leading to falls, so falls and fall risk. Okay. So they've got this program that they set up as an educational program. Doctors can go through. It's very easy. It's all online. 
And here's some of those components. So one, they have a screening algorithm. You ask certain questions, you see if they're at fall risk, then you're going to assess them using a physical assessment, okay, which is very easy to do in the office, very quick and easy, we'll talk about. There's a lot of information about falls as far as educational material, but you know what the whole bottom line purpose of all this is for the docs? Is to send them somewhere. The whole point of this program is say you're at fall risk, you need to go to this program or this program or this program. Physical therapy is an option, but does everybody need physical therapy that's at fall risk? Heck no. But you know what they need? They need a specific fall prevention balance enhancement program that you guys know all about, I hope, right? That you have that embedded in your program. In fact, if you follow what we do within the functional aging specialist certification, you know about balance, you know it's a big area, but we give you some ideas. But when you look at the assessments they recommend, what do you recognize about those things? Yeah, we already teach the 30 second chair stand and the eight foot up and go as essential assessments. And the four stage balance test is just a, a static balance test, right? Where you just start to reduce base of support to see how far they can go with that, that's it. You do those things. So if you're a certified functional aging specialist, you can already tap into this communication, this, this system that you already utilize. You think doctors are gonna appreciate that? If they know you're using the same assessments that they're supposed to be using in their office, yeah. How many of your doctors do you think use a study program? Not many. You think you could be a catalyst in your community for getting them on board with the study program? What do you think that would do to your status? Right, that would certainly elevate your status in their eyes. And I think especially um, if you're in a smaller community, I think you'll have a better impact with this, okay? Because it's, it's more relational, right? There's, you're not, you're not um, kind of diluted within the market. So what does this mean? Well, again, you think about this 80 plus year old population, you have to figure out, do I wanna train them? Because that might mean my groups have to be a little bit smaller. It might be my trainers have to be a little bit on board with handling issues and problems and especially being very attuned for fall prevention. You know, I tell the story um, as a confession in our workshops that one of the assessments that we often do uh, at Miracles is the modified cat sib. It's a sensory test. So basically, stand on the floor and then close your eyes. And then step up on two foam pads and see if you can do that and then close your eyes on the two foam pads. And this last condition, when you're on the foam pads and you close your eyes, that's what we call the vestibular condition, right? So you're gonna assess the vestibular system because you can't see and you can't feel. Well, we had this guy come in, older gentleman, but he looked pretty fit. He was very, looked pretty functional, no problem. And so Dan and I said, we were running through this test, but honestly, we're not really paying attention. And so he gets up on here and he's pretty solid and then he closes his eyes and you know what happens? He falls like you just chopped him down. And we have to catch him. You wanna know where we did this assessment? In front of the dumbbell rack. No, he was doing a header into the dumbbells, I kid you not, right? Because he had an underlying vestibular issue that we didn't know about and we assumed since he looked fit and healthy, he was okay. So you have to be really attuned to these fall risk issues with these clients, okay? I think also from a programming perspective, you need to really get educated about balance and balance interventions. That's why we had Christian Thompson talk about these fundamental aspects of balance. And we talk about Tai Chi, right? These are effective interventions that you can market, okay? So get some more education on this population and not just relation to falls, but what about even some chronic disease management things, right? Again, just you're upping your status, upping your, your skills in this area, okay? Think of the 80 plus population as it continues to grow. I think they're still gonna keep seeking out trainers who get them and understand them. Because they're boomers, so it's still all about, still all about me, even if they're 80, okay? And then try to connect with healthcare providers, and I think the study program is a good way to do that. Start a conversation, host a workshop, give a lecture, something, right? Okay, number two, getting down to number two. Gen Xers 
Who are Gen Xers? I know, I know boomers. We talk about boomers all the time. A little snot-nosed millennials, right? We hear about them all the time, ruining everything, right? Who are these Gen Xers? Well, they're this little population stuck in the middle that's forgotten. Nobody talks about Gen Xers. A couple different reasons. One, the boomers are huge, and the millennials are so, yeah. Okay. Who are the Gen Xers? Me. I'm a Gen Xer. Who's a Gen Xer? Who knows you're a Gen Xer? If you're between the age of 38 and 53, you're a Gen Xer. Yeah, that's right. We're forgotten about. We're like the best population on earth. You want to know why? Because we lived through the best decade on earth. The 1980s, baby. Exactly. I am tell. I kid you not. You just had to be there. It's like Woodstock. It was awesome. I was thinking about uh, the, kind of my talk. We drove through the night to get here, right? And so I'm entertaining myself and I'm listening to some music and I'm thinking about my talk and I'm like, I gotta listen to some 80s music. So I put on an 80s mix. It was crazy, man. We had so many different musical influences and we got the Michael Jackson, King of Pop and Madonna was still like a virgin or something, you know, okay? <laughs> But then we had the heavy rock bands. Go on. What's your favorite heavy rock song of the 80s? Back in Black. Oh, that's a good one. ACDC, Back in Black. Yeah. Nobody knows any. Oh, I Have the Tiger. That's a good one. It's kind of soft, though. Kind of soft. One of my favorite ones is Quiet Riot. Come on, feel the noise. Yeah. Awesome. I'm telling you, we loved it. We love the 80s. I, I, we get so nostalgic when 80s stuff comes up, like when you talk about the Rubik's Cube, when you talk about the Atari game system, right? You've got all these 3D virtual reality. Forget that, man. We had flashing blocks <laughs> that we had to imagine were football players. Oh, you got the music. Oh, yeah. That's a bonus. I'm telling you, we had a great time, okay? We are kind of the forgotten generations, though. I, I'm serious. When you look kind of across industries, nobody talks about Gen Xers. We, they really don't, okay? So the kind of median age of Gen X is 45, okay? I'm 48, so I'm kind of on the, the, the front edge of that. What's going to happen to the Gen X population in the next five to ten years? They're going to turn 58, and they're going to, then they're going to turn 63. What does that mean? They are hitting this aging kind of, I don't even know what to call it, right? process, right? They're going to start thinking more like we see happening within an aging population. Here's something that I'm really convinced about, okay? I'm convinced that the aging process affects, although it's very different, from kind of a maturational perspective, it kind of hits us all very similarly. We do mature, okay? We do kind of grow up. And there's always gonna be differences, but when they looked at the boomer population, right, everybody was like, oh no, they're not gonna be nothing, they're, they're not gonna be anything like the aging populations before them. And while there's a lot of things that look very different and radical, there's a lot of things that, yep, they're still right on this aging maturational process. And so when you look at, so Dan and I have studied gerontology, right? What is this process of getting older? And we see boomers are still fitting into that. In fact, it's an underlying principle that hits a lot of our marketing and a lot of the stuff that we do. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Think about that. What is the top level? Self-actualization. The boomers are living out self-actualization just in greater numbers and in some slightly different ways, okay? We look at Eric Erickson's psychosocial stages, okay? This whole idea of ego integrity versus despair. You don't have to know gerontology just to understand that you start to look back at your life, right? Think about what have I accomplished? Who am I? Okay, which is also part of this self-actualization process. Do I live with that or do I look back and go, man, I was a crappy person, right? 
I don't want to live anymore. No, you, you've got to come to grips with whatever's happened in the past and you're looking forward to the future. This whole idea of legacy that you were talking about, that connects so well. Because the boomers are wanting to live, leave much more of an ethical or experiential legacy. They don't care about leaving their kids and their grandkids money, right? They want to leave them with something better. And I think the, the, the Gen Xers, they're going to be the same way, right? So it, there's a lot of similarity here. There also are some shifts that are going to occur as we start to, uh, cre- or we start to bring more Gen Xers into our programming. But I will say, think about your facilities. How many of you, when you think, even though you're targeting older adults, still, for some reason, get a lot of people in their mid-40s and late 40s that are like, yep, I'm down with this. That's actually our second avatar that happened on accident, right? We're focusing on these older adults, and, and then we're getting all these, especially women, in their 40s that are like, yep, I want to do that too. And like, why? All right, these are, okay, well, yep. And it just kept going so well that we're like, yeah, we're going to stick to that. It's, it's the Gen Xers, right? They're already latching on to this whole concept that you're already doing. So there are going to be some changes, but not too great. But what that does mean is if we just look at older population and not think about boomers and seniors and Gen Xers, if we just think about the older population as a whole, what's going to happen, right? It's going to continue to explode, and there's going to be a lot of similarities that occur. So let me move on to some of the differences, though, that you're going to start seeing, some of the subtle shifts that are different from the boomers transitioning to the Gen Xers. One, a little bit more diversity. Okay, you're going to start seeing a little bit more of ethnic diversity, Uh, within the Gen X population. Now, remember, the stark contrast you see between boomers and millennials, Gen Xers basically fall as a transitional generation in between them. And so it's not going to be a stark change. It's going to be this gradual change as the Gen Xers age. But also, I think the Gen Xers are going to become a little bit more like the boomers because they're aging, they're maturing, right? That process is going to happen. Okay. We also see that they're still going to be educated. They're going to be very well educated. So we talk about the boomer population as being the most educated, older population in history. Well, the Gen Xers are going to keep that trend going, right? They're very educated uh, individuals. We also see that technology adoption, okay, is going to increase. So while right now we think, uh, we're not really going to use Instagram too much for our boomers and you know, our older adults. It, it'll work some for sure. But how is that going to change in five to ten years? Right Now maybe Instagram is the thing or there's something we don't even know about yet that is going to be the thing. That Gen X or that like, the millennials will adopt right away. They'll just eat anything. Right? It's like, like Mikey. He likes it. That's an 80s reference, right? Okay. Okay, so it's just going to be a a gradual shift, but we talk about the boomers and Facebook. Gen Xers are on Facebook, okay? They are on Facebook. They use Facebook a lot, and they have a lot of connections on Facebook. So I think that's still going to be a valuable medium to keep using uh, in in reaching this population. So we've got some very similarities, and we've got some differences. Kind of what does this mean for now? One, screw those millennials, right? There's all this hype about millennials within the fitness industry because everybody's fighting over them. Anytime fitness, guess what, right? Everybody's fighting over these millennials, but these guys get it. They've seen it. Hey, there's something different here about this older population we got to tap into, okay? But most places are still just going to be fighting over the millennials. Let them, okay, let them. And it's okay if you have them. It's okay if you want to pursue them, all right? No big deal but a lot more potential with the the boomer Gen X population. Really believe, just kind of have some trust in this process of aging uh, because it is going to affect the Gen Xers. They are going to age just like we've seen others. They're going to do it in their own way. Each generation does it in their own way because technology is different, society is different, their experiences are different, that they're still going to keep growing up. They're still going to become generative, 
I think like we've seen the boomers become, giving back, correct? So right now, a lot of Gen Xers are in the throes of still raising families or at the end or more at the beginning of that, careers and all that. What's going to happen in five to ten years? They're going to start shifting out of that. And they start thinking more about the aging process, their own aging in the future, okay, for them into retirement and beyond, okay? And overall, the 65-plus population is going to keep dominating. It really is. That's why I was so surprised in this club industry report that there's just no mention of this, right? There's no mention that in 2050, so think about that, okay? We're in 2018. In 32 years, guess what's happened to the 65 plus population? Not only has it grown exponentially, it hasn't leveled off. It hasn't leveled off. So don't get caught up in looking at, oh, maybe I need to focus on different populations. Stay the course, right? It's going to catch up to you is what's going to happen. It's going to be more uh, successful for you. All right. You ready for number one? Come on, are you ready for number one? I mean, uh, two days, where this is the pinnacle, right? This is it, okay? We are about to close it out. Here is my top trend that I really hope that you understand and that you take action on because I think this is, this is a big one. Competition is coming. Competition is coming. We have it easy right now. We do. Because think about your market, how there are few people that get it, that understand it, and have a product that meets their needs. In fact, this is what we've been building FAI on is, look, you can be the, the lone voice many times in your whole community. Nobody else is doing it. And nobody else is going to have the marketing materials that you do and understand the mindset and have good training, right? You're going to be unique and different. That's going to start changing, I believe, in the next five to ten years. It's not going to be dramatic, but there are some factors, I think, that are really important that you've got to know. One, there's going to be a variety of sources that this competition is going to come from. Now, people have started, people have tried already they haven't been too successful. I'm going to show you one example. Okay. They haven't been too successful because they didn't quite get it. They didn't understand it or they had the wrong model. Uh, there's actually a couple models I know that are in development right now that I'm not putting my faith in. I don't think they get it either. Right? But it's, it's going to happen. It's coming. More and more people are waking up and it's happening. If you look at the Association of Fitness Studios, as an example, so they've been created, so URSA deals with these large health clubs. The Association of Fitness Studios deals with boutique clubs, personal training studios, etc. right? And I think when you've got an association that's now built for this independent group, and they really believe that the older population is a population that needs to be served, and they're seeing these boutique studios start to serve the older population better, right, you're, you're going to see more competition, right? You talked about the boutique studio, right? It's, right, boutique studios are coming. Who sees bo some boutique studios in your area already as a potential threat? Not much. A couple, okay? It's going to change, right? They are coming. So this is going to be coming from a, a variety of sources. Here's one example, Nifty After 50. This was created by a physician, Dr. Sheldon Zinberg in California, um, it is a franchise. They now have 29 locations. It is a health club model. They offer a lot of different types of programming, though, that really is very age-appropriate and specific. They look at brain programming, as an example, and fall prevention. They have a, a, a neuro-something program that's really power training, right? So they, they get it. They understand power training is important, okay? But let's watch. This is the, this is the uh, kind of commercial that's on their website. So I want you to watch this. Hi, I'm Dr. Sheldon Zimberg, the founder of Caremore and Nifty After 50. It doesn't matter whether you've never exercised before in your life or how bad a condition or good a condition you might be in physically. Any exercise is better than no exercise at all.
But the customized exercise program that Caremore offers you at Nifty After 50 will have the greatest bang for the buck. I want to wish you a happy new year, but more importantly, a happy new you. What do you think? <laughs> so your overall impression, if you had to sum it up in one word, would be old, right? Pretty old. Not just him, but everybody else that was exercising around them. So, but here's the thing. Their success has been in the old market. And what I just say is about to happen. The boomers are about to get old. Okay? So well, do I think they really have the right kind of message and environment? No, but what if they figure it out? What if they improve it? They only have 29 locations right now. Uh, Dr. Zinberg, he's, he was actually very, very wealthy. Like he had some sort of practice and developed some, like a healthcare system or something. So he like, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars or something. So he invested in creating this Nifty After 50. Very well-intentioned. I love it, okay? I think it's skews very old, but it's just one example of it sticking. I grew up in Virginia. I was looking up their locations. Richmond, Virginia, it doesn't sound like it, but they've actually been very progressive in medical fitness and in, in fitness for older adults. I think there's four locations in Richmond, okay? I don't know how well they're doing, I, I was trying to get some information about their pricing and their modeling and that sort of thing. I don't know. They, they didn't respond. Um, but that's something. It's there. there. It's got money behind it. Is that a potential threat? Yeah, it is. That's just one example, though. There have been others that have failed. But don't you think there are going to be others that are going to be trying to jump in? Absolutely. Okay? Another example. Our Fit Body Forever and our Ageless Fitness Program. Okay? Fit Body Forever, uh, how many locations do we have right now? 38. We have 38 locations. Uh, we've known this for a couple years now. It's been slow. But what's happened is that, uh, so we, we, this is only for Fit Body Boot Camps, right? So you guys are in Fit Body Boot Camp. But it's been such a huge success, and Fit Body Boot Camp owners haven't quite been on board yet because the mentality has been just open another location, right? So Nissan talked about that. The drive has just been, you got one location, get two. They are actually shifting completely how they're training all of their new, franchi new franchisees and their current franchise owners to start adding Fit Body Forever. They have over 600 Fit Body uh, Boot Camp locations. Dan just had a conversation with Bedros, the owner. Their goal by the end of this year is over 200. They want to like five to six X this thing rapidly, okay? Massive growth. They're getting behind it. Guess what that means? Competition, right? If you're not a fit body boot camp, that's competition for you. Okay? Ageless fitness. Now that we've launched ageless fitness as a license model, we, I don't know how this happened to fall into the absolute perfect people with Mike and John and their team to partner with this at the beginning. So this is open to any type of club, any type of studio, okay? But um, anytime fitness, here's the thing. These guys knock it out of the park. They've got massive influence into anytime fitness. Do you remember how many locations there are? Over 4,000. I think this is going to grow exponentially. Exponentially. Okay? It's coming, right? Obviously, we want this to happen, right? We want to make a difference, we want to make an impact. Let's take a look at this video from Ageless Fitness. I'm Mark Middleton with a word on Ageless Fitness. Ageless Fitness is key to active longevity. It's a springboard to health, wellness, and adventure, and it's critical to bouncing back from the health challenges that we'll all face as we age. What you do with Ageless Fitness, well, that's up to you. Joe Johnston is in his mid-70s. He spends a lot of time doing this. Okay, I'll take that. This. Ah, oh, there it is. And this. Ooh. Whoa, nice. All so that he can do this. That golly, that one is good. Joe is an age group world champion in pole vaulting. He and his wife Janet travel the country competing and hanging out with their many friends in the track and field community. 
What's his secret to ageless fitness? The secret is finding something you like to do well enough that you want to do it every day. And when you do that, you have to have good cardiovascular fitness. You have to have some basic strength. You have to have some balance, uh, coordination. You have to eat right so you don't gain too much weight. All of that is pole vault, and that's my secret. What will you do with ageless fitness? Suck it, Sheldon. What a, does that look anything like the Nifty After 50 video? <laughs> no, right? Uh, and that was Mark Middleton of Growing Boulder who uh, created that marketing content for us. Competition is coming. Regardless of kind of where you are, it's on the rise, right? And for one, that's a good thing because we need the older population to be active. And there's still so much opportunity. I don't think you guys need to be overly concerned, but you need to be aware need to be aware that this is coming and depending on your market it might mean a lot right depending on the market that you're in okay so what does this mean for you what is this whole rise in, in potential competition that I think is going to happen very rapidly in the next five to ten years mean for you right now one I think you need to get hyper focused you need to figure out who your avatar or avatars are within the older adult, adult market and you need to crush it with that avatar. So when competition comes, you're secure, right? You've got your position in the market. You've got your tribe and your following and your community and you're known, right? I think that's really important. Know who you are because when competition comes, you tend to start reaching for everybody and you're not trying to serve everybody, right? If you're focusing on like the senior athletes and more higher functioning folks, don't get concerned if Nifty After 50 moves in, because they're gonna hit more lower functioning folks, right? If you're solid, you're solid, okay? So know who it is and know how to reach them and set up those systems. Always have multiple poles in the water. You should never be relying on one thing. Every month, we talk about you need to really have an online and offline, external and external strategy all the time. Don't one off this thing. Don't, oh, I tried something, it didn't work. You've got to have multiple things going continuously in order to dominate your space in your, in your location, in your region. Okay? So again, it secures where you are. Always improve. Don't rest on your laurels. Okay? If, whatever your idea of success is and you reach it, if you start to cruise, right, you're going to be vulnerable. It doesn't mean you have to always be trying to get more clients and more money. You might be happy with your, your finances and the amount of money you're making, but secure it, right? Shore it up. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Don't leave yourself vulnerable. Always keep improving. Always keep learning. Don't be blindsided by the next, thing, ne next new thing that comes along because you're already going to be on top of it. And we talk about things like the, the exercise and how it affects cognition. I think that's the next thing. Get on it, right? Be ahead of the curve so that when other people come in and they start to, to start talking about this stuff, you've already addressed it. You're already there. You're already doing it, okay? You're ahead of everybody else. Become an expert. I do think this is important. Uh, have a face. Be in a position of authority, okay, within your marketplace so that people know who you are. Hey, don't you think that uh, everybody knows who JC is in her community when, when training people with Parkinson's disease? Yeah, that's, she's known as an authority, as an expert. Okay, you need to make sure that you do that. And the last thing, in order to put all this stuff together, I really think you need to get a coach. You need to find someone to coach you to help you put all this stuff together. If you're floundering, if you're wondering what to do, if you're unsure of things, if you don't know the next step, get a coach. Or, I know some of you are considering ageless fitness. Kind of more of a done-for-you model. Okay? Tap into that. Use those existing resources. It's why we're creating them. To help you be successful as you move forward. Okay, we want all of you to be successful. 
So we put all these things together, right? These are our top five. Brain fitness, looking at those fit seniors, the boomers getting older, but then the Gen Xers becoming a prime target for your marketing and watching out for competition that's going to be on the rise in the next five to 10 years. I hope this conference has been valuable to you, not only from the information, but from the relationships, from the networking, from all the resources that you have at your disposal. I want to thank you all for being here and thank you for your participation and your generosity. Thank you.